Good morning, everyone. I'm checking on the beer that I made over a month ago, and it's not looking so great. <sighs> yeah, it smells a lot better than it did, but there's still a pellicle layer on top that I'm not sure what it is, and it's not fermenting out to a low specific gravity. So yeah, not great. But let's check out what microbes are in that pellicle layer under the microscope. Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Blog's Neat. And yeah, I attempted to make a beer. I attempted a chocolate pomegranate stout, in fact. Uh, and for some reason, it has decided to spoil on me. I don't often brew beer, um, but I have brewed a lot of beer to make whiskey, and I have never had a beer go south on me like this. I've never had one spoil. Um, but for some reason, when I attempt to make it for consumption, not for distillation, it decides it's not going to ferment out all the way and that, yeah, some spoilage microbes are going to get in there. And one of the big differences in the process of making beer for consumption versus beer for distillation is the sanitization that you do. There's a lot more sanitization for making beer for consumption rather than making beer for making whiskey because those spoilage microbes end up being additional flavors rather than just, yeah, ruining your beer. <laughs> but here we are. But let me give you my recipe in case you want to try it at home because it sounds like it should be really delicious. I haven't tasted it yet and I will taste it. I just want to um, finish my coffee and check out the microbes under the microscope first. For this brew, I used 10 pounds of two row malt, one pound of chocolate malt, one pound of wheat, a quarter pound of roasted barley, and a quarter pound of black patent. I also added three quarters of a pound of chocolate and two and a quarter pounds of pomegranate seeds, fresh pomegranate seeds. I used an ounce of Cascade and Challenger hops. And for the yeast, I chose a Belgian ale yeast. The starting specific gravity was 1.084, and now that we're at 1.036 about, that would put this a little over a 6% beer. So not bad, but for stouts, I kind of like them a little higher ABV, if I'm being honest. I'll put the full recipe and instructions of what I did down below in the description. Um, but I decided to ferment this beer on grain. I've always done this when I make my whiskey fermentations. So I decided to do that as well. And then after I removed the grains, that's when I started to notice that it was going south. So I don't know if some fruit flies got in there and while I was straining out the grains or what, but someone brought in, I mean, maybe it was me, who knows? I shouldn't blame the fruit flies, but it started to give me an acetic acid smell, essentially. It was a little stinky feet coming forward after a couple of days of straining out the grains. So yeah. Uh, but instead of dealing with that stinky smell, I decided to go on vacation for two and a half weeks and just left it alone. But when I got back, it's where it's at now. It smells a lot better. It smells more like a stout. So either the pellicle layer is preventing me from smelling that stinky feet smell, or whatever microbes are in that pellicle layer has just completely dissipated and converted those stinky feet smells into maybe some esters. Who knows? As you can see, there is clearly a pellicle layer on top. 
uh, this area over here. I disturbed to get a specific gravity reading. Um, but this area is pretty much undisturbed. And this appears to be a patch of something different. It's almost like a fluffy looking pellicle layer. So I'm gonna check out both areas of the pellicle layer under the microscope and yeah, let's see what we find. Before I put these under the microscope, I want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. And if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, I've got a link in the description below and you can join our neat community over there. So let's start by looking at the regular-ish looking pellicle layer under the microscope. This is it at 100 times magnification. And here we are at 400 times magnification. There are definitely lots of lactobacillus in here. You can tell by those long rods, those bacteria right there. But there's also some shorter little pill-shaped bacteria. Perhaps that's Propionibacterium, but I'm not sure. And then the yeast, I'm seeing mostly like elongated oval-shaped yeast with pretty big vacuoles. And if you look closely, in a lot of the vacuoles, I can see these dancing bodies these volutin granules, which I've talked about in a previous video. Now, my guess is that these yeast are probably Brettanomyces. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, yeast morphology is entirely dependent on the conditions of the fermentation. So yeah, these could be other uh, yeast, I'm just not sure but my guess is retinomyces. Now let's move on to looking at the fluffy-ish pellicle under the microscope. This is at 100 times magnification. And here we are, whoa. Okay, here we are at 400 times magnification. Wow, this is completely different. There is so much bacteria and there are no lactobacillus to be spotted anywhere. Maybe these are Acetobacter. The only reason I'm saying this, not because I can identify it based on looking at it, um, is because I was smelling that like stinky feet thing a while back in the fermentation which would lead me to believe it's some acetic acid producing bacteria like Acetobacter. That to me looks like an oxalate crystal, but... All right, so if this needle looking shaped thing right here is in fact calcium oxalate crystals, I'm curious as to why I'm seeing it in this portion of the pelvic layer and not the regular looking portion of the pellicle layer. Why is it in the fluffy looking part, but not the other parts? And I suppose I did not sample all over the pellicle layer. So these are just two samples, but I don't think it's coincidence. Now, calcium oxalate crystals are in plant matter. They are in plants, algae, lichen, fungi, they're all over. You can find them in the leaves, the stems, the roots, the tubers, the fruits. Yeah, it's a way for plants to store calcium. It's a method of defense and in some instances helps build strength. So multiple uses found in multiple places. Some plants contain such high quantities of calcium oxalate that they are deemed toxic. Philodendrons are an example of that, but then again, like spinach also has calcium oxalate, so it's just not at high enough levels to be deemed toxic. 
And when researching why I just found calcium oxalate crystals in my beer pellicle, I found that beer stone, which I had never heard of, I'm not a beer brewer, um, remember this, is composed of mostly calcium oxalate. It's like 50 to 65% calcium oxalate, along with like proteins and stuff, some organic matter. This forms because oxalic acid is released from malt during mashing. It's inevitable and there are various methods to sequester the calcium oxalate from your brew to get it to fall out of solution and then also to get it to not stick to your fermenters and other equipment because apparently it's like impossible to remove. So if we assume that the calcium oxalate crystals that I'm observing under my microscope were formed because of the beer brewing process, then again, why am I not seeing them in the other portion of the pellicle layer? Why am I just seeing them kind of aggregate in this one area? I don't know. Also, why am I seeing these tiny little bacteria, tons of these tiny little bacteria aggregating around this specific area where the calcium oxalate crystals are. Now in beer brewing, calcium oxalate crystals or beer stone is undesirable because one, it gunks things up and two, it also holds on to bacteria. So am I seeing bacteria here because there's calcium oxalate crystals or beer stone forming for some reason right here and they're just attracted to that? I don't think that that makes sense, but maybe that's an explanation. So let's go back to the fact that calcium oxalate is in most plants and, and other things. Now, obviously I didn't put any leaves or weird plant matter into my fermentation. However, I did put in pomegranate seeds. And interestingly enough, fungus will or can produce oxalate crystals, calcium oxalate crystals, and other metal oxalate crystals under certain conditions. Some of these fungi are uh, associated with white rot and brown rot, things like that that you find in plants. So when doing a quick Google search for what fungus can attack pomegranate trees and pomegranates, I found that Aspergillus niger is the first thing that pops up. Now, when found in pomegranates, the outside of the pomegranate looks relatively normal. And then when you cut into it is where you can see either some black powder or you'll see some brown decay rot happening. And as I was going through all of the I don't know, 30 some odd pomegranates that I cut into. I do remember coming across this, but of course I cut this away and discarded any of the brown, unusual looking areas. And these pomegranate seeds not only went into my beer that I'm brewing, but also went into my pomegranate wine and my pomegranate wine's totally fine. But is there a chance that some spores of this fungus somehow made their way into the brew and survived through the boil. Like, I don't know, is that a possibility? Maybe, because when I first saw this kind of fluffy area of the pellicle, I thought maybe that's like a mold or a fungus or something that just happens to be popping up in specific areas and the rest of the pellicle is kind of keeping them uh, in this only specific spot of the brew. Like maybe that's possible. And if so, then maybe that could explain why the calcium oxalate crystals are only forming in this specific fluffy looking little part of the pelka layer, right? But as I was looking through this sample under the microscope, I was not really finding 
what Aspergillus niger and other fungi look like. They look kind of like cute little flowers. Um, I wasn't seeing that, but it's possible I just missed any spores or the spores have broken down in a way that they're not really recognizable. I'm not sure. Anyways, a lot more questions and answers here, but I do believe that these are calcium oxalate crystals that could be forming because of the beer making process or could be forming because I have some fungus in this part of the pellicle layer. Who knows? If you know, <laughs> let me know in the comments below. But anyways, I found it super interesting that both part of the pellicle layers looked completely different. Even though macroscopically, you know, they appear to be different, I didn't think that they microscopically would be so vastly different, but they are. And like I said, the beer smells a lot better than it did. Uh, however, I gave it a taste. It tastes bad, very, very bad. Tastes like vinegar, not great. Um, yeah. So this beer was a failed brew. <sighs> yeah, my first failed brew. Wow, I guess I shouldn't say my first. My first failed grain brew, not my first failed brew. And when life gives you spoiled beer, turn it into whiskey. So I will be distilling this. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I love getting to look at things under the microscope. And if you enjoy that too, please let me know.